Alright, so the VOD. This is a class that has been highly requested. <laughs> I can't count how many times have you guys requested for this thing. And also, there are some little things that we are going to do. I think that you've also requested for a dual wielder character. So that is the focus uh, that our VOD is going to have right here. Now, the VOD is a jack of all trades. The VOD, he can do anything. He can do anything he wants. He can be a melee fighter, he can be a support healer, he can be a caster DPS, he can be a tank, he can basically do whatever the hell he wants to do. That is why Vards are so amazing, because they have access to basically e everything in the game. That said, for this specific purpose, like I said, we are going to be building a melee focused Vard that is go also going to have access to a whole bunch of spells. The, I'm also going to give you some advice and some changes that you can do to tweak some things around and for you to be able to use this Vard like for example as a caster as well as a main caster and whatnot. There's many things that you can do with the Vard. Let's begin with character creation, of course, races are always important, there are going to be races that are going to be better, but I'll leave that to your interpretation because at the end of the day, play what you want to play. Look how you want to look. That is why Larian decided to change the ability points. The ability points, that is what we are going to be really interested in. Now the spells as well, I usually advise for you to take, for example, early levels, the, the Bane is just amazing, and also... Um, the, the hideous laughter to be able to make enemies go prone. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do right here. You can also have speak with animals to be able to speak with animals. And since you are a very charismatic character, you're always going to have to. You're always going to be able to pass those checks and whatnot. You can also heal. There's many things that you can do right here. But at the end of the day, this is going to be mainly a fighter. Now these are the the stats that we're going to have the. The proficiencies, ability points, the skills that we are going to have. Now, like I said, the VOD can do basically anything he wants to. Depending on the ability points that you are going to choose, you are going to use different skills, proficiencies. In this case scenario, uh, we have, for example, 16 and dexterity. Ideally, we are going to be popping up this guy all the way to 20. And then we also have charisma, which uh, we're going to have this guy uh, at uh, 18. Depending on if we make some concessions or, or, or not, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Constitution, we want to have a little bit of high constitution to be able to uh, sustain the concentration, which is going to be an amazing synergy that we are going to have on the itemized section section of the build. Now the skill proficiencies, like I said, there's many things that you can do, you are proficient in many things, if you want to have uh, intimidation, performance, deception, whatnot, you can. I One thing that you need to have in mind uh, as well in here is that you could also, since you already have intimidation and persuasion, then might as well take away this thing, also deception is one thing that you could take away and just use sleight of hand for your bar to be able to open locks. Because opening locks, it's going to allow you to get rid of the stealth character. If you do not want to have a stealth character on your crew, then you can certainly use the, the Vart to open your locks. Furthermore than that, I'm not going to dwell too much on the leveling. I am going to stop on the levels that are going to be relevant for our builds. But at the end of the day, the spells that you are going to have access to, they are going to be up to your personal preferences. And I usually always advise for you to take spells that are not going to like, for example, Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave is an amazing melee range spell. And this is also a CC kind of crowd control that we can uh, use to push enemies away from us, so that is always something amazing. Uh, the spells, they are not going to be that important, they are going to be important, but uh, we're mainly going to be focused on melee. Now, level 3. At level 3, if you build this bot like I did, you are going to be able to add expertise to some uh, skills that you have. And uh, for example, we're going to have performance right here. We can take away this little thing and we can, let's say, add this thing to intimidation or deception. Uh, this is just going to be socials. You can also add a little bit more of... Uh, your expertise when your sleight of hand so like i said this could be a bar that could open locks for you bards can virtually do anything for you now the real thing that we are interested on the on the level three is going to be the college of swords because like i said this is going to be a melee bard 
It's going to give us proficiencies with scimitars, which is ideally what we are going to be using with this build. Either rapiers or scimitar, we already have uh, proficiencies with scimitars. We're also going to be using medium armor, I'll talk about that later in the itemization section of the builds. But we're also going to get the slashing flourish, the, the flourishes, different kind of flourishes that are going to be doing different kind of things, but... Uh, Usually, you have this one that attacks two enemies at once, and also you have Defensive Flourish, which is amazing because it's going to increase your armor class by four, and if you follow the VL, we're going to have lots and lots and lots of armor class, so basically we're going to be a, a very strong, durable tank tank deal, damage dealing <laughs> Bart. The fighting style, we're going to be taking two weapon fighting because like I said, a lot of people have been requesting for me to make a dual wielder and might as well uh, take the shot right here to take care of the VOD and also take care of the dual wielder, dual wielder melee character. And the spells, again, uh, I mean, it's up to your personal preference if you can, if you want to either take damage or you want to take a uh, hit metal. I think that is an excellent choice because it, it strips away some annoying enemies from their weapons and this is amazingly important on the early stages of the game where there are some very scary enemies because of the weapons that they are using. This is amazing. Now, the important thing about level 4 it's going to be our class feat. And this is where you're going to have to make some concessions and this is where you're going to uh, have to decide what is it that you want to do. Ideally, my way to go right here, it would be with dual wielder, but this thing is just only going to give you a... This thing is just only going to give you plus one to armor class. So it's basically that. It's plus one to armor class. Because we're not going to be using weapons that are not light. We're also, we're always going to be using finesse weapons. So that is something interesting. But, uh, I mean, armor class, it's it's a nice thing to have. The ideal thing would, would be to have uh, up to level 12. It would be to increase your dexterity to all the way to 20 to get the plus 5 to dexterity checks and get the plus 5 to armor class on our medium armor and also as some another thing that you could do is just take away this thing and instead place your points into charisma to get a uh, 20 dexterity 18 charisma to have a little bit more of a of for attack rules on your spells that you are going to be using but also one more thing that it's also quite amazing it's the war caster because we're going to be using a ring that is going to give us a plus four damage while we are concentrated and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you can be concentrated. It's uh, another amazing thing to do because concentration is going to give you access to a whole bunch of CCs and it is amazing. So there are some concessions that you uh, want to take right here. Ideally, Warcaster, or you can also take Dual Wielder, or you can also take the uh, full ability improvements. For this case scenario, I am going to take the full ability improvements and the uh, dexterity mastery also one more thing that you could do is if you want to focus mainly on your casting and then uh, not care about that much about the armor class then you can swap the dual wielding var that i'm building right here place one handed weapon in one hand use a shield on the other hand and then for the um, dexterity armor class you can reach 18 and pump up your charisma all the way to 20 place some points into warcaster and use the gloves that are going to give you dexterity 18 uh, and then you can also spend some points into constitution as well but there are some changes those are some changes that you can make i am not going to go that path because like i said i want focus for this to be a dual wielder character and i think that uh, it is in my best interest to actually have a little bit more armor class right here so i am going to be taking the dual wielder even though that that one plus one armor class is not really that relevant a little fun you are going to receive another spell and like i said after your personal preference just use whatever cc or damage spell glyph uh, of warding it's actually quite amazing because it's a highly damaging spell that is always nice uh, you're also going to receive the improved bardic inspiration so the diocese of the improved bardic inspiration is going to be 1d8 so that's amazing and also you're going to be able to re regain your bardic inspiration after a short or long rest at level 6, you are just going to gain one relevant thing, and that is going to be your extra attack. With our extra attack, and we, if we have our Vart, 
if our Varden is hasted, we are going to be able to deal 5 attacks in one single turn, but just to have in mind that it is not as high of an amount that we have with different martial classes, but it's always nice and you also have access to spells, so what else do you need? No. Uh, at level 8, the only relevant thing that we did so far, at least for this build, is that we chose the feature to increase our dexterity to 18, and now we are on level 10, because at level 10 we are going to receive our next improvement or bardic inspiration, which is going to increase the diocese all the way to 10, so that is going to be amazing. We can also change the skills that we have right here, we can add a little bit of a bonus right here to some stuff, and also the one important thing that you are going to receive at level 10 is going to be your magical secrets and the magical secrets is basically you can take things from different classes uh, spells that you wouldn't normally be able to use and uh, like for example you can take highly damaging spells right here like fireball or we can also use cold lightning remember that we're also going to have concentration we need to be concentrated so cold lightning it's an it's an amazing choice to be able to have access to some distance but uh, also you could be using ice storm to create ice surfaces or just a nuclear spell like fireball or maybe you want to have haste haste is also going to uh if you do not want to be relying on a different caster that is going to be casting haste haste is also going to give you the concentration that you're desperately needing for your extra little synergies that we are going to have so Ideally, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do right here, that you can take right here. There's a whole world of possibilities. This is going to be open to you at level 10. And uh, yeah, there's that. And finally, at level 12, we are going to take our final ability improvement right here to increase our dexterity all the way to 20 to have those little attack damage rolls in our armor class on our weapons that we're going to be using on the itemized section section of the build. So let's just get right into it. So let's talk about uh, the itemization of the build. Like I said, for the armor, you want medium armor. At level Act 3 of the game, you are going to be have access to the Armor of Agility, but there's also a different armor in Act 2 that is going to remove as well the lock that you have on the Dexterity bonus for Armor class, but it's also going to have less Armor class than this. So that is something that you need to have in mind. The thing is that you are going to need Medium Armor to be able to become a little bit more tankier. Then also, in Act 2, we're going to have access to the Cloak of Protection, which is going to give us a plus one to armor class. The Boots of Striding, these bad boys, they are going to allow you not to be prone, and uh, if you want to, for example, cast eye surfaces with your bard, it's going to allow you to traverse through them as much as possible, and this is going to be active whenever you are concentrated, and since you're always concentrated in different things, in, in either buffs for yourself, or CCs for the enemy, whole person, or making them be confused, or making them be frightening, there's always a bunch of CCs that you are going to have access to, so you're going to be able to be the master of the battlefield because all, all of that kind of stuff. Dog just this year gauntlets, this give you a 1d4 necrotic damage to your main weapon. Also we have the killer sweetheart, which is going to give you access to a critical hit on demand. And also we have this surgeon subjugation amulet, which is uh, a amulet that you can get on one of the bosses on the hospital <laughs> on act 2 of the game. And this basically paralyzes each enemy that you land a critical hit. Since you do have a critical hit on the man, you have a immediate critical hit paralyzed on the enemy on the man. And this is also going to be able to be used once per long rest. So it's something amazing as well. Then we have this strange conduit ring, which you are going to receive a 1d4 psychic damage whenever you are concentrated. And then again, you're always concentrated because you always have your CCs, your buffs. This character should always have concentration. Now as for the gameplay, the thing is that you want to do your defensive strike. If you do your defensive strike, uh, as you were able to see at the end of the game, you're going to have access to a 30 armor class. So basically you're invincible uh, not even landing critical hits the enemy will well they will be able to hit you and also you also have the access to it 
at all times, 100% of the time, because it requires bardic inspiration. And remember that we, when we were leveling up, we were able to receive that class feature, which you're going to be able to regain your bardic inspiration on short rests and long rests as well. So you can spend all of your bardic inspiration in one single turn to be casting uh, that thing, which is going to also deal quite a lot of damage. And you're also going to have access to it in every single fight, because you're going to be able to gain it back after every short rest. For the more than that, it's just a melee character that has access to high damaging, high spells, high damaging, uh, high tier spells, and also two CCs. Uh, you always want to be concentrated if you want to cast, for example, a eye surface. And then after you cast the eye surface, you cast a spell that should require for you to have concentration. You would be able to traverse through it because you have the boots, the long striding boots, and then you're confusing people, and then you have the high armor class. So it's just a jack of all trades, dude. It, it can do anything he wants to. He can have control of the battlefield. And like I said, if you want to focus a little bit more on the spell casting and not so much on the dual wielding, you can by all means pump up your your charisma points instead of the dexterity points. Equip a shield. You're not going to be as durable, but you're going to be dealing a little bit more damage and whatnot. So there's all kind of sort different things that you can do with this guy, and it's just amazing. I mean, if you also want to be providing Vodic inspiration to your main character, to your main tank, to one of the other reveals that I have presented here in the channel, that is something that you can do as well, most certainly. Vards are just overall a very very fun class to play, they have so many tools at hand, they can control the battlefield, they can deal damage, they can be the tank, they can be the face of the party because they have high charisma and they can do intimidation, they can do persuasion, they can do basically anything, they can open locks, so yeah, this Vard basically can do anything he wants and if you want to have this guy as a main character and not as a side thing for your crew member, let me tell you, it's an excellent choice. Vards, they are natural leaders because they can do anything they want to do. Anyways, if you like the content, you like and pretty super appreciate it. No one has told you today that you're a gorgeous and beautiful person. You are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful, beautiful person. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel before you close the door, and I'll be seeing you goddamn gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.